our Allied soldiers, ready to cross the channel, on the final alert. Here are three of them, waiting, talking, wondering, as soldiers do. The first one here is an American. Call him Joe, Joe Dokes. And the second, an Englishman. Call him Tommy, Tommy Atkins. And the third, a Frenchman, Jacques. Call him Jacques Bonhomme. These three are different in many ways, but they have a lot in common, too. Names, for instance. Names like Lafayette, Jefferson, Tom Paine. Phrases like liberty, equality, fraternity, the pursuit of happiness. And underneath, as human beings, they are very much alike. Take Jacques first. He's like a lot of Americans or Englishmen. Before the war in France, he could have had a family, children, been a mason, a farmer, a businessman, or a chestnut vendor. Of the time of the cherries, of the mocking birds wing, and the coming of spring, when all the world married. Will come summer weather. Young lovers will meet. Who have lain so long apart. Oh, now let us sing of the time of the chariots, of the coming of spring. And Oh, the fields that were sweet in the time of the cherries lie under the beat of the cold winter sleet so long the spring fairies. For now let us sing of the time of the cherries, of the coming of spring, and sun in my heart. And whatever his job was, he wishes he was back at it and Tommy the same way. Call him an average Englishman or a lot of different Englishmen. And Joe too. For Joe here could have been a farmer, a salesman, like this. Whatever Joe was, he's fighting for the right to be that again, or something better. Three men, three nations, fighting the same cause against the same enemy, and while they're at it, learning to understand each other a little better. I wonder how it's going to be over there. Funny, I guess. At least here in England, I can understand what you're saying, part of the time, anyway. <laughs> I, I dig you, Jackson. Yeah, I dig. Hey, wait a minute. I got something here. The army thinks of everything. Read that? Oh. Huh? Boy, what are those? Yes. 
Yeah, very interesting. Uh, 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 bonjour, uh, mon ami. Bonjour, monsieur. Enchanté. Yeah. Uh, Parlez-vous uh, français? Bon, oh, un petit peu. Quoi? Un petit peu. Non, non, non. Un petit peu, un petit peu, un petit peu. Un, un petit peu. Yeah, it is. Un petit peu means just a little. Bloody marvelous. No trouble. Lord, look at those ducks. That's a cute little gadget. That's the Army's idea of a yacht. <laughs> it may be a rough crossing jump. Yeah. We're getting there the hard way. Been a lot easier if those Frenchies hadn't fallen down so fast. Hey, would you say that your soldiers on Baton in the Pacific fall down? I've done it. I'm sorry, pal. I, I didn't know that you... Look, uh, have an apple, will you? Merci. What's your name, pal? Jacques. Jacques? No. Jacques. J-A-C-Q-U-E-S. It's Jax. Yes, Jax. Jax. Well, Jax, meet my friend Tommy here. He's, he's English. This is oh, Jax. how do you do? Okay, John. Okay. Hey, we do not fall down, huh? Hell no. We were just plain beaten, that's all. I was over there with them for a while, you know. Man, we never knew what hit us. Yes. For you and me, Joe, it's bleeding lucky the Germans had to come through France first. Well, we sure needed the time, all right. I wonder why us democracies never get ready for a war. The Joes and the Jacques and the Tommies of the world are ready now and will stay ready in the future. The lesson is learned. But... Back in 1939, they took a lot of things for granted. It's like this. Suppose in 1939, Tommy was a doctor in England. And Jacques, a scientist in France. And Joe, a teacher in America. They talked of their peaceful work, unaware of the rising voice of fascism. Now, here you can see at a glance how the scientists of all nations have contributed to every great development. For instance, we can thank a Frenchman, Louis Pasteur, who first isolated the germ as a cause of infection. But Louis Pasteur's discovery would have been meaningless without the work of an Englishman, Lister, who developed the theory of antisepsis and showed how to kill the germs Pasteur found. It was an American who first used anesthetics to relieve pain. The work of Pavlov in Russia opened new doors to scientists everywhere in the world. A Canadian, Sir Frederick Banting, discovered insulin. Palladium was discovered by a Frenchman, Curie, and his wife, a Pope. And when we use these discoveries, do we think of nationality? <laughs> Certainly not. Science, like religion, belongs to humanity, to every man, woman, and child on earth. Consider for a moment the work of two great Germans, Albert Einstein and Paul Ehrlich. Two names we have forbidden. They belong to an inferior race. Our superior science denies the ridiculous assumption that all men are created equal. Our science proves that there is a master race, the German aliens, tall, blunt, and powerful. They are the natural masters of bird production. It is the duty of all other races to supply us with raw material. If there is a ruling race, so must there be a ruling class. We in Germany have abolished the sterile institutions of democracy which strangled us. To assert our scientific right 
to rule the world, we must wipe out the inferior peoples by every means. By death, by sterilization, by slavery. Who is to stop us? The Russian cattle who will never understand the exercise of military power. The French, for the most part, a decadent people. We have friends among them who appreciate our position. Pierre Laval, Jacques Doreau, the British, we have friends there too. When the time comes, our friends will point to Russia. The British will fight, but not against us. The Americans, a joke. Our friends there will convince the Americans, too, that the real enemy is Russia. And we have made certain arrangements with the rulers of Japan. For too long, we have waited. For too long, we have taken the leavings of the world. Who has oppressed us? Who has starved us? Humiliated us? Who has stood in our way? It has been the peoples of democracy and revolution. I speak of Russia, China, England, the United States, and France. France! Four times in 150 years, we have been forced to discipline the French nation. Yes, four times in 150 years, German militarists have forced Jacques to take up arms in defense of his country. 1792, 1814, 1870, 1914. I remember very well. In 1914, Kaiser Wilhelm hurled his armies against France. Jacques remembers the answer of the French people. The Marne. The taxicab army. Verdun. The Chemin des Dames. Clemenceau. Roche. And you, Tommy, Lloyd George, Haig, the old Contemptibles, Ypres, Pachendel, the Sam, and you, Joe, President Wilson, Jack Pershing, Chateau Thierry, the Marines at Bellewood, the Argonne. Together we beat them. Together we marched to the Rhine. You lie. We were never beaten. We were betrayed by socialists and democrats. Our army was still intact. This time it will be different. This will be the final time. Now, once and for all, we will wipe out even the memory of your revolution and the American and the British and the Russian. The memory of the storming of the Bastille, of the Declaration of Independence, of the Magna Carta, of the Declaration of the Rights of Men, the Three French Republic, the most dangerous slogan known to Europe, liberty, equality, fraternity. Now, for a thousand years, we will decide the fate of the world. For a thousand years, you will know the superiority of the German race. We will teach you with dive bombers and tanks and with our invincible armies. 
Hail to the new order. Hail to the super race. ago that this happened to France, to the land that belongs to Jacques. He knows how long a time four years can be. But during that time, though the Germans occupied his country, Jacques, or men like him, found ways to keep on fighting beside Tommy and Joe. Let's go back a bit and suppose that this American, this Joe, had been in the Air Force, and this Englishman, this Tommy, in the RAF. And suppose they had been shot down over France. Wherever they landed, they would have found Frenchmen ready to help them. Frenchmen like Jacques, still fighting. Workers, farmers, housewives, or village priests. Soldiers without uniform, daily risking their lives to help our airmen back to England. Tells me that we may be able to get out of bed at night. Wizard. What's that? Thank you. Isn't that right, Father? Well, if all goes well, I think so. Oh. How did you get into this racket, Father? Oh. To tell you that, my boy, would require something of a confession. Not a confession of guilt, but more an honest review of our story here in France. You know, war had come to us. A war which we didn't seek. And we were defeated. It would be difficult to make you understand the terror and the confusion of that defeat. Perhaps you felt something of it at Pearl Harbor and at Dunkirk. But our Pearl Harbor and our Dunkirk was France itself. There was no place to retreat. There were no protecting waters around us. There was no breathing spell. And it seemed to us then, there was no help anywhere. Almost before we knew it, the enemy was in our villages, behind our lines in our homes, in our city halls, in our radio station, in our newspaper. And the voices within who cried, defeat. 
Well, then the Marshal Pétain spoke. L'histoire dira plus tard ce qui vous fut épargné. This man had beaten the Germans at Verdun in the last war, and many Frenchmen respected and trusted him. He said that we were paying for our sins, and in our anguish we accepted this judgment. Then he abolished representative government in France and made himself chief of state. He told us we must learn to collaborate with the Germans. Then the Marshal spoke three words of hope. Work, family, country, he said. He said in these three words we would find forgiveness. Of course, there were many who never for a moment accepted the Marshal. That was the goal. Croyons que l'honneur des Français consiste à continuer la guerre aux côtés de leurs alliés. This man refused to acknowledge defeat. He escaped to England and rallied the fighting French. He said, France has lost a battle, but not the war. He said, collaboration is treason. He said, Frenchmen, fight on. And before long, most of us learned that he was right. With me, I remember when it happened. It was a terrible awakening. It was when the government began to turn over hostages to be shot. Some of them were my friends. And then I saw French workers sent away to Germany. I saw the families saying goodbye. And I looked to the winner of Verdun to die with these hostages, to be sent away to Germany with these prisoners. But he didn't either. Instead, he gave his approval. And then I knew. I knew there were some things worse than war and better than peace. I knew that the Marshal was not our father, but the close relation of our enemies. And I understood one of these three words, world, family, country, had come to mean. And then, I longed for three other words that we had lost. Liberty, equality, fraternity. Liberty, equality, fraternity. So you see, the rest was easy. For instance, I found a boat and some men to sell it. And I think I'll see them about you now. It's time, my friends. Nice fellows. Mm. I'll tell you something interesting. This man, who calls himself Claudius, is the son of the owner of the castle. And the other one is the secretary of the communist cell in this district. They have not always agreed in the past, but now, against a common enemy, they have found unity. And I, as the priest of our village, approve. Give me a hand, someone. Who's he? Forestier. He comes from Paris. He goes with you. He joins the consultative assembly. <laughs> goodbye. It's very sad to, to be always saying goodbye to one's friends. But perhaps before too long, I'll say welcome. We'll make it as soon as possible, Father. 
Tommy, this Jacques carries on the fight. But there are other Jacques who cannot fight. Hundreds of thousands of them. Locked in the prison camps of Germany, they can only suffer and wait. But if the Joes and Tommies could somehow talk to them, they might tell them this. Hey, Jax. Hey, you there, Jax. How are you, Jax? It's me, Tommy. And this is Joe. Listen, Jax, we know that you can't talk now, but listen. Things are happening. We want to tell you. We know that you've been through hell, but hang on. We can't tell you how soon, or even how, but we know now that we're going to win. We're on our way. Millions of us, British, American, Russian, all the United Nations, and Frenchmen, Jack, thousands of Frenchmen, because France never died. She never forgot the memory of liberty. We know this well. Now listen, Jax. Listen. Maybe you can hear. <laughs> Outside of France, your French army, the little army that began with nothing, a few ragged troops of De Gaulle. They trained where they could, Jack, in England, in America, in Canada, in Russia, wherever they could. The fighting French that fought its way from Bir Hakim to Corsica, from Tunis to the Italian mountains, fighting on the ground, France's new army, gathering from all over the world. And fighting in the air, with the RAF, with the Americans. Fighting at sea, yes, your fleet, Jax. Join with us and thrusting towards the coast of France. And Toulon, those 50 ships of Toulon that your sailors loved, that they scuttled. Mile by mile, day by day, they're fighting their way home. So hold on, Jax. We're on our way. And when victory comes, It'll belong to you just as much as it belongs to Tommy and me. You've earned it, Jax. You and all the others who are making it possible, outside of France and inside, where your brothers are fighting, even if you can't. Listen, Jax. Inside of France, they're singing. Yes, singing their song of liberation. Can you hear, hear the flight overhead of the raven? Oh, friend, can you hear, hear the faint muffled cry of our country? Arise, partisan, rise, you tillers of the land, rise, you workers. The hangman shall pay for the bloodshed and the tears and the sorrow. Come down from the hill and come out of the mine, oh my comrades. Get rifles and guns and grenades, you have hit, get them quickly. Tonight you shall kill, use your gun and use your knife, kill them swiftly. Take care, Sabotur, for it's precious dynamite that you carry. For each of us knows what he 
one, what he does as he passes. My friend, if you fall, then a friend takes your place from the shadows. At sunrise, the blood of the tyrant will be dry on the highway. Oh, sing, come and sing through the night, come and sing, freedom listen. trial for rebellion against the established order. Your list of crimes is well known. You are one of a long line of criminals condemned for resistance to invaders for 2,000 years. And for the last 150 years, a wicked struggle, revolt, mutiny, arson, propaganda, sabotage, armed resistance, spiritual pollution and cynical indifference to your lawful masters. These crimes in themselves are sufficient to condemn you to death. But more than that, your clear record of continuing to rise and fight again and again under conditions and laws of certain defeat can only be defined as an unforgivable sin. Therefore, no torture, no means of death, no humiliation would add up to a just sentence of punishment in such a case. A case without parallel in history. You stand alone. There are no witnesses to help you. You may speak briefly in your own defense. You say I am alone. I think not. If what I have done is a crime, then there have been many with me in the past. Many with me today. I speak of the soldiers of Russia. They are with me. I knew know it well. The people of China, 450 millions of them. The American boys in the jungles of the Pacific. The men and women of England, Canada, Australia. The partisans of Yugoslavia. The people of Greece, Norway, of Holland, of Belgium. Poland, Czechoslovakia, wherever there are men who believe in liberty, they are with me, against you. And all these people, the Jews, the Tamis, and the Jacks of the world, are well armed. And they are coming, not to help me, but to join with me and all free men against you and all you stand for. From over the waters, across the plains, over the mountains, the fly, march, sail here. I hear the steps. I hear the music of our triumphant parade. All right, what is done by you children of the land, by you workers. The hangman has paid for the bloodshed and the fear and the sorrow. Oh, friend, can you hear, hear the song of liberation? 